Then you come to Esther chapter 6 and verse 1. This is where I've been working to. And that night, the king could not sleep. So he commanded to bring the book of the records of the Chronicles, and they were read before the king. That night, the king could not sleep. Everything is bad. Everything is messed up and getting worse. Everything is hopeless. Everything is filled with anxiety and worry. They're facing a slaughter. She's scared to death. And the only thing that saved their life was that night the king could not sleep. Now watch, y'all got to see this. Let me preach. Look up here at me. That reader just happened chance opens it and starts reading about Mordecai the Jew who saved his life. And the king says, wait a minute. What was done to reward that man? Has he ever come and tried to tell me this story? No, sir. He didn't want any credit. No, sir. Has he ever, has he ever asked for a reward? No, sir. My goodness. He did it with no motive. I want to reward that man. What's happened to that man? Nothing, sir. Nothing was done to reward him. Nothing. Oh, my goodness. Now he's got off the throne, and he's walking around in his robe and Versace uh, uh, slippers, and, and, he's, and, he, and he, he, he's pacing the floor. How can I reward that man? How can I reward that man? How can I reward him? And he finally sits down. Now the sun's coming up, and in walks Haman, he's freshly shaved. He slept like a, he slept like an angel and he feels good and he walks in and he thinks I just had the greatest night of my life and tonight I get to do it all over again. I am something special. He walks into the presence of the king. The king looks at him. He's got black bags under his eyes and he says, he says, now, uh, he says, I want to ask you something, Haman. He said, what? What would you suggest that I do? Let's say there's a man in the kingdom that I really want to honor. And Haman, with his egotistic self, is thinking, oh, my God. Now, he's about to do a humble brag. Uh, I know it could never be I, but, but oh, king, I w come on, y'all. I'm working hard up here. Y'all <laughs> sitting out there just like you at a movie. Where's the popcorn? I preach to myself. This is how I preach. That's how I talk to myself when I read stuff. But he says, what would, what, let's say there was somebody I wanted to bless, Haman. I mean, I really wanted to show honor and show the whole nation this guy is a big deal to me. <laughs> Sir, I would suggest humbly I think you ought to take your robe off, your robe, and put it on him. I think you ought to take your stallion, the steed that you ride on yourself, and you ought to let him ride on it with that robe. I think you ought to take some pipsqueak, some minor, lesser person, and let them guide the bridle of that horse on a rope and walk through the streets and his trumpets are blasting, tell all the people, the man in whom the king honors is before you. And instantly the king said, that's brilliant, I love it. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to do everything you just said, Haman, but do it to Mordecai the Jew. And he said, by the way, I think you're important enough that you should be the one who's leading the horse, screaming the man who the king wants to honor. This is the man on the horse. Well, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but stuff you're worrying about, you've forgotten who your God is. You've forgotten how powerful he is. You've forgotten that when he speaks, 
seas open. When he speaks, mountains move. When he speaks, demons tremble. And know the enemy's plot against your life will not be successful. God is fighting for you. Sit down. I'm almost done. So, don't you know how humiliating that was? <laughs> the man whom the king honors. The man whom the king honors. That night, after a humiliating day, Haman comes to the palace for the final banquet. Queen Esther is there. They eat. The king turns and says, why did you do this? Tell me the real reason. What do you want? She said, sir, there is a conspiracy in the land to kill Mordecai, the Jew, and all of his seed. And I don't know if you knew this, king, but I, Esther, I'm a Jew. The king is enraged. Stands up because he didn't sleep all night. So he's, 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 you know how you are when you didn't sleep good. <laughs> Turn to your wife and say, I know how you are when you didn't sleep good. <laughs> Turn to your husband and say, you're that way all the time. It doesn't matter if you sleep good or not. Can I finish? Here's the finish. He's so angry he doesn't want to make a, a quick decision. He, he is smart enough to know if I get rid of this guy, it's going to cause me a lot. So he gets up and walks out. He says, who, who, who was it behind this conspiracy? And she says, this one right here, Haman. He's so mad. He's just, if he spit, it killed grass. He's so mad. <laughs> he walks out of the room trying to pull himself together. And the queen takes off to her bedroom and he follows her. Haman follows her because he's now, now all the tables are turned and he falls on her bed. When she goes into her bedroom, she's sitting on it. He falls on her bed and he starts crying out for mercy. And the king just happened at that time to walk in the bedroom and he sees this guy on the bed with his queen. And he says, I was, I was trying to figure out what to do. Now I know what to do. And the gallows that you prepared for Mordecai, guards, take him out and hang him right now on those same gallows. Now, now let me finish. So here's what I came to say. In a church this size, This 2,600-year-old story is not just a piece of history, but it's a reminder that you need to hear that you have a king who has intentional insomnia. He said, I will. He didn't say, I can't sleep. He said, I will not sleep or slumber because I'm going to walk the floor. And while you sleep, I am up and I'm planning and I'm plotting your comeback. I'm planning how that the enemy has constructed things that I'm going to turn for your good. I'm going to use them against the very voices that have tried to destroy you. Your king is not asleep. He's active. He has a plan. He's for you. In a crowd this size, there's some family that's represented that had a heated argument, unkind, cruel words were spoken maybe even last night, and it looks like the enemy's gone wild in your family. There's somebody else here who's scared of a medical situation. You dread going back to the doctor. The word, the C word, cancer, is tormenting you. You don't know what in the world. And the problem is real and it's being formed. And you feel like you're worried and you're full of anxiety and fear and worry. In a crowd this size, there's some parents that are agonizing over a teenager that's making crazy decisions and you never thought in. You get one kid fixed and then another one acts up. 
How do you know? Because I raised five of them. You get one thing fixed and here's another one and you feel like you're losing your mind and where is God? His name's not even in this family apparently. But he sent me to tell you that the one thing that turned the battle for Esther, the one thing that turned the battle for Mordecai is that the king had intentional insomnia. How many of you are worrying about something? And there's only two reasons why people have insomnia. Something internal or external is bothering them. It may be something internal. It may be a disease. It may be something going on internally. Or it may be something externally with people, relationships, job, family. But it's, it's, it's worrying you, tormenting you. Jesus said... Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and cast your worry on me, for I can handle it. And your king is not asleep. He's awake. The king can't sleep as long as you have a problem. You don't believe he loves you. You're not a somebody. You're the bride of the king. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications on new posts and live streams. Be sure to share this video with a friend. You never know how you can send the Word of God right when somebody needs to hear it. And you can use your social influence for good, for the glory of God. Thanks again. Share it with a friend. And I really appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.